All right, so I just wanted to start off today's video and uh, apologize for the way I reacted in my last video. If you watched my last video, you probably know exactly what I'm talking about. The way I reacted to a uh, situation was, was not the right way. It, is, uh, it was wrong for me to do what I did, and uh, I apologize. The way I reacted is not the way anyone should react or act on the water or behave, and uh, that was a very bad example. And the last thing I want to do is set a bad example on my channel. And uh, once again, I'm sorry and apologize uh, for the way I acted. But what we are going to be doing today, um, we're gonna be doing something quite different. Oof, quite different. Um, we're gonna start off the day throwing live shrimp. I have uh, about three dozen live shrimp right now, and we are gonna pitch them, and we're gonna be looking for mangrove snapper and sheep's head. Um, I threw up that poll, wanted to see what you guys wanna see. Uh, most of you guys voted for live mullet, which we'll be doing in the, uh, the next video. I just didn't feel like today was the right day to do a live mullet video because of the wind and well a lot of different reasons but we're gonna start off doing that we're gonna try to bring home a couple fish to cook uh probably max two between sheep's head and mangroves and uh i'm gonna show you guys what i do and i truly believe that live shrimp is basically the best way to catch fish whether you're on a boat bridge you're wading whatever you're doing live shrimp almost always works and it works for almost every single species i think every every species eats a live shrimp but we're gonna go ahead and get started here uh so let's go. All right, so we're gonna start off by using, uh, I'm actually using 20 pound uh, monofilament leader, which is fairly light, but it, it's it's possible that I could get redfish, I could get snook as well as uh, our mangrove snapper and our sheep's head. Um, so you wanna be use something a little bit heavier, but you wanna use something fairly light for the mangrove snapper and the sheep's head. Um, so we're just gonna grab a shrimp here. So we got our shrimp here, fairly decent one, maybe three and a half inches, three inches. Um, then we're gonna take our circle hook. This is a three aught circle hook. Um, I think it's made by Mustad. And I like to just, this is my personal opinion, there's a ton of different ways to do this, is just rig it through the tail just like that. And I feel, well, I feel that that works the best. It looks the most subtle. Some people rig it through the head, some people rig it through the uh, side of the tail, but I like rigging it just like that so the hook shank is sticking straight up. And we're gonna get on them. So we're gonna start off by taking our shrimp and just flipping them under the dock. I'm just gonna free line them right now. I might have to add a jig head later because of the amount of wind that's out here. But we'll just let them float down. We'll see, see how this goes. Oh, I'm eight. Uh. Well, first fish of the day. Oh my gosh! <laughs> first fish of the day is a jack, and the other jacks almost look like they're trying to eat him. They're whacking the crap out of him. But, it's a first fish and a good start. I saw a couple nice sheep's head under the last dock. They weren't uh, weren't falling for it, but you never know. We're gonna keep going. Alrighty, so this guy right here is a uh, Jack Ravel. If you're not aware, they're a very common fish to catch inshore because of how extremely, extremely aggressive they are, and will literally eat anything. What? They do love live shrimp. Next shrimp. Oh, I'm eight. Ugh. Another jack, dude. Where are these snapper? So because of how windy it is, I'm gonna take um I'm gonna take these jig heads. These are an eighth of an ounce. Um, so that's a pretty small jig head. Um and I'm gonna take them and rig them with the shrimp exactly the same way. Um, this will help me keep the uh, shrimp getting to the bottom. Right now it's a little bit too windy. That shrimp is, ugh, that shrimp is literally just floating along the surface, which is not what I want. I want it to be on the bottom where the mangroves are and the sheep's head 
will uh, actually eat it because right now I'm having a little trouble keeping them keeping them down. Oh, I'm on. Oh, it's a decent fish. What is this? Oh my gosh, here we go. It is a very good fish. Okay. Finally, we get an actual fish worth keeping. Look at this guy. Let me drop the steak in real quick so we don't drift away here. All right. I'm gonna swing this guy in the boat. Holy crap. Alrighty. Look at this guy. Holy crap. Alrighty, let's drop him on the measuring tape real quickly. Look at that. 18 inches right there. 18 inch sheep said that is my biggest ever. Let's uh, let's show him to the camera. Alrighty guys, so that right there is, uh, he's, I just measured him, he's about 18 inches right on the dot. And uh, the legal limit is 12 inches, so we will be taking this guy home and uh, cooking him up and see how he tastes. Um, that is my personal best sheep's head. Uh, I've honestly never really targeted sheep's head before. I always, always see them like this size in that 18 to 20 inch uh, section. And I never actually target them, but they are a really cool fish. They've got these really bright uh, white and black stripes and they're very easy to see in the water. Right there, I basically just uh, blind casted a piling and he was there to eat the shrimp. So we're gonna put this guy in the cooler and uh, we're gonna keep fishing, see what else we can catch. And uh, yeah, let's go. There he is in the cooler. Uh, yeah, let's get another one. Whew. Oh, I'm eight. Look at this guy. Dude, he's actually pretty big. <laughs> Nice fish. Dude, he's so fat, holy crap. So, nice trout right there. He's probably, I don't know, 18 inches or so. Um, hit it right under that dock, I felt him. Uh, that was a very hard thump. I thought it might be a snook, but we got a fat little trout. I'm gonna go ahead and release him. I don't really, uh, I don't wanna keep any trout today. So, just gonna make it easy, put him back in the water right here. There he goes. Oh, hello. Man, he wanted that. He was chasing it all the way out to the surface. I'm not sure if this one's a keeper. I guess we'll see. Get in here, buddy. Yeah, he looks just a tad bit too small. So he goes, let me see here. He's like right on the dot 12. Um... Stretch him out here. He's on zero. He's like right on the dot, 12 inches, but a little bit too close for comfort. I'm gonna go ahead and let him go. Um, but not a bad little guy. You can see his uh, teeth right there. Sheep said have these crazy teeth. You can't really see him on this guy. He's a little, uh, little small, but they have these crazy teeth that are very, very similar to human teeth, and they look very funny. And that's that's really what they're known for. All right, he's gone. This is lucky day. If he was an inch bigger, I probably would have kept him. Oh, I got 
picked up by something. It once. Oh, that was an E. Got him on. Oh, what is it? He's heavy. Please be a big sheep. Said, what is this? Is this a? Is this what I think it is? What the heck is this? Oh my gosh! <laughs> Hello. Oh my gosh! <laughs> what the heck, bro? I've never. Oh! Get him in here. <sighs> Holy crap! What the heck? <laughs> ah! Alrighty, so right there, this is my uh, first flounder I've ever caught in my entire life. Um, they are absolutely crazy, crazy looking fish. They've got two eyes right there on the front of their face, and they are literally that flat. Like they're thinner than your hand I mean this one this one's pretty fat but I don't know uh, I guess we're gonna keep them they are in season right now so we're gonna taste them and uh, see how he tastes so I'm gonna throw them on the measuring tape right here in a second and then uh, we're gonna put them in the cooler so this is pretty awesome I've never caught a frowner before and it's pretty exciting <sighs> alrighty let's give a good good look to see how long this guy is so right there that's zero he goes all the way to about 20 inches right there that's 21 that's 20 and that is a crazy fish right there they are very crazy looking a little slimy but uh let's get them in the cooler all right let's get the homie on ice drop them in there he, like barely fits in the cooler Ugh. all righty Alrighty, so we are back in the kitchen right now after that uh, pretty sweet day. It is actually the next day, um, and we're gonna be doing the catch and cook right now. Um, and my dad is actually gonna be helping me out with it because, well, I'm not really an expert when it comes to uh, cooking and cleaning the fish. So he's gonna be taking us through that, and uh, let's uh, see what's going on here. All right, so this is my dad, Sal. He's gonna show us uh, what we're doing here, so uh, go ahead. So we're gonna take our fish, and we're gonna cut it up into chunks. And then we're going to dip it into a seasoned flour, which just consists of um, salt, pepper, a little paprika, a little cayenne pepper, and a little garlic powder. And then uh, I've taken two eggs and beaten them here. And then in here is uh, a 50-50 cornmeal and flour mixture, which I've just taken some of the seasoned flour and put it over here and then used the, garlic, the cornmeal to cut it up. So, because you don't want it too grainy, too, too cornmeal, it doesn't taste that great. So then, um, and then we just drop them into a um, frying pan that just has straight olive oil in it. And you just cook them for the golden brown. Don't cook them too hot, or they'll cook too fast on the outside. They'll be raw in the middle. So, we'll sit here and wash them, and then when they're dry, we'll drain them over the pan. And then into the So right there, that is the uh, the flounder, and we are gonna go ahead and taste it. Um, here, you take a piece. So, a lot of times on catch and cooks, um, people almost always say it tastes great, but it does actually taste great. I'm not lying. It is super good, and pretty good. Pretty good. So that was a flounder. Pretty. Um, I wasn't expecting to uh, actually catch a flounder, but I'll take it. Um, we're gonna try the sheep's head here in a second. But as you guys can see, it was pretty easy just to take, you know, a live shrimp, put it on jig head, toss it out there and find fish. Um, when you're fishing all types of structures, you can find ev virtually everything as from sheep's head to uh, flounder. Um, so that is a great way to find fish and a great way to catch fish. 
And then right here we got the sheep's head. It virtually looks, it looks pretty much the same um, with the batter on it. Um, we're gonna go ahead and try that. Not much of a difference. No way. It's good. It it's good, but it doesn't matter. I Fried almost can't taste the difference. Fried fish is delicious no matter what kind of fish it is. Either way, it's all super good. And it's super easy to do. Just pick up some live shrimp, put it on a jig head, and uh, and fish your day out. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video. Um, we're gonna go ahead and finish this right here. Um, if you're new to the channel, be sure to hit the subscribe button. And if you enjoyed this video and want to see more, go ahead and hit the like button. And uh, let me know what you guys thought of this video. I've never done a catch and cook before, and this is uh, this is new to me. So let me know if you guys want to see more. And uh, I'll see you guys in that next video.